I think it's fair to say that all three of these shoes are pretty polarizing, but which one's the best? Let's find out. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm taking a look at three different summer slide sneaker things, and finding out which one is the best, and which one might be best for you. Before I actually jump into the video, I want to give a huge shout out to Kais, because he actually beat me to the punch with this one, and dropped a video comparing the Yeezy Foam Runners to a pair of Crocs, and to be fair, his video was actually really fun, so you guys should definitely check it out. But, in order to make this video a little bit different, and also because I was planning to do it anyway, because I thought it'd be a good comparison, I decided to add a pair of the Adidas Pharrell Boost Slides. While these Boost Slides are not as shoe-like as the Foam Runners or the Crocs, they are a good alternative, and if you're not trying to go for that crazy out there look, a pair of boost slides might be the perfect way to go. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video and find out which one of these three shoes is best for you. So to start things off, let me give you a little bit of background on each shoe, just in case you're not familiar with any one of these shoes. The first shoe that we're going to talk about today is the Crocs Classic Clog, and this is a shoe that I'm almost certain that everyone is familiar with. The Classic Clog is the standard Crocs model, the one that pretty much everyone has, or everyone who owns a pair of Crocs has. The Classic Clog is a very simple shoe and pretty much is only made up of two separate pieces, the main clog itself and this articulating strap. If you'd like to check out my full review on the Crocs Classic Clog, I just posted it yesterday and you can check it out through the link at the top of the screen. The shoe is made up of Crocs proprietary Croslite foam and retails for a price of $44.99. Next up, we've got the most out there looking shoe of the bunch, the Yeezy Foam Runner. According to the logo on the bottom of the shoe, this shoe is technically made by Adidas and is part of Adidas's Yeezy line. Although the Foam Runner looks visually insane, it is really just a one piece construction, it's just one piece of solid molded foam. Apparently the Yeezy Foam Runner is made up of a mix of EVA foam and algae based foam and is constructed in the United States. When the Yeezy Foam Runner first came out, it retailed at a price of $75, but of course being a Yeezy shoe, it sold out immediately and now is reselling for over $300. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to call it a $75 sneaker because that's what Adidas and Yeezy intended it to be. And then finally we've got the Adidas Pharrell Boost Slide. As you can tell visually, this shoe is probably the most similar to other shoes on the market. It's essentially just a standard slide with some upgrades. And the upgrade that I'm referring to is the fact that a majority of this slide is made up of Adidas Boost. Boost is an incredibly soft foam-like material that Adidas uses in a lot of their different sneakers, and when they added it to slides, people were really excited about it because they loved the way the Boost felt underfoot. While this isn't the first Adidas Boost slide ever made, it's currently the only one available on the market because the other Boost slides have since sold out. However, somewhat unfortunately, because this shoe is a collaboration with artist Pharrell Williams, the shoe retails for a slightly higher price than the original Boost Slides. This shoe goes for a price of $99 US dollars. So surprisingly, if you're only taking into account the original retail price of each one of these shoes, the Pharrell Boost Slide is actually the most expensive. Which I guess in some ways makes sense because there's a lot more going on with this shoe. There's a lot more pieces, there's a lot more materials, and the materials used on this shoe are probably more expensive than the foams used on these shoes. However, if you're taking current market value into consideration, the Yeezy Foam Runner is by far and away the most expensive at $300. But before we get any farther into these shoes, let's take a quick look at the packaging that they come in. So right here we've got the packaging for all three of these shoes and it's obvious that one of them is a little bit less expensive than the other ones. When you buy a pair of Crocs it comes in a plastic bag and that's it. You don't get a box, you don't get anything else, you get a plastic bag and the shoes. While I guess to most people packaging isn't the most important thing, it is kind of interesting that there are a lot of other $45 shoes out there that come with boxes like pairs of Vans. To be fair though it is probably a lot cheaper for Crocs to ship their shoes in bags rather than in boxes so that's probably the main reason that they do it. It is what it is though, definitely on the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to packaging. Next up we've got the Yeezy Foam Runners which come in this natural cardboard box that really only has one tag on the front of the box. Then opening up the box you'll see that you actually do have some printing on the top and on the side of the box that says Foam Runner and the shoe also comes with some sort of natural colored paper. It's obviously not expensive packaging but hey, at least you get a box. And then finally the Pharrell Boost Slides come in a surprisingly premium feeling Pharrell Human Race box. If you've ever bought a pair of Adidas Pharrell shoes you'll probably recognize this box as it is pretty much exactly the same as every other pair. The only real difference is the size tag, and what's kind of funny is that while the name of the shoe is changed, the actual silhouette of the shoe doesn't match the slides, in fact, it just looks like a pair of generic Adidas sneakers. So while you are paying the most for the Adidas Boost slides, you are probably getting the best packaging out of the bunch. But now getting back into the thing that matters, the shoes themselves. The next item that I wanted to cover in this comparison is sizing. When it comes to sizing, Crocs are interesting because they don't really fit true to size. And not only that, they also don't come in half sizes, so if you're a size 8.5, 9.5, or anything like that, 
you're kind of out of luck. For me personally, I found the Crocs fit pretty large. I'm a size 9, however, I do have narrow feet. And because of that, I went all the way down to a size 8 because there wasn't a size 8.5 option. The size 8 actually fits me great, and I also have a pair of size 9 Crocs for comparison. Yes, they are the KFC Crocs, but uh, they don't fit as well as the standard Crocs just because they're a size 9 and not a size 8. Also, if you care, they have chicken on top of them, which I thought was kind of funny. If you guys want to check out the unboxing of this shoe, I'll leave a link at the top of the screen. If you are one of the unfortunate few who's a half size, I think you might actually make out better in a pair of Crocs than someone who's a whole size. And the reason I say that is because Crocs do seem to fit a half size down. So if you're a size 8.5, go to a size 8. If you're a size 9.5, go to a size 9, and they should fit you great. If you're a whole size, however, you're kind of stuck between between going down a whole size, going up a whole size, or just dealing with the size that you're given. For me personally, my biggest problem with Crocs are the sizing. I just feel like it's all over the place and it never really fits me just right. Another thing that's kind of weird is that you can get away with a bigger size if you use the strap. I personally don't use it because I don't like the way it looks. Um, sometimes though, when I'm trying to engage X Games mode, I'll flip it down, but that's just me personally. If you want to go with your true size and it doesn't fit you exactly right, and you want to be able to walk around in the shoe without your foot sliding out, you can flip down the strap and you should be good to go. However, if you're like me and you wear the strap forward, maybe go down a half size or a whole size. Next, we've got the Yeezy Foam Runner, which again, unfortunately, does not come in half sizes. I don't know if it's just too expensive for Yeezy and Crocs to make molding for half sizes. I get that that's expensive to do, but you know, you're selling a lot of pairs, you should be able to do it. Like I said with a pair of Crocs, I'm a size 9, and in the Yeezy Foam Runner, I bought a pair of size 9s, and it actually fits me perfectly. Obviously, because of the weird shape of the shoe, there is sometimes some room in odd places around the sneaker, like above your foot, or sometimes like in the back portion of the heel, but it's never enough to bother me. So if you're a whole size, I would say go with your true size, because it fits fine. However, if you're a half size, I might suggest actually going down a half size to the next whole size, because I feel like this shoe will still fit you okay. The fit of this shoe is really kind of baffling to me because I feel like you can get away with almost any size around your size. Like if you go up a whole size, you might still be able to rock them. If you go down a whole size, you can still kind of stretch them out to fit. It's really a weird shoe when it comes to sizing. All I can say is just go as close to your true size as possible. And then finally for the Adidas Pharrell Boost slides, the sizing is pretty simple because it's an adjustable pair of slides. None of the other shoes are really adjustable when it comes to fit. So for this shoe, I would just say go true to size and if it doesn't fit you perfectly, just adjust the strap on the top and you should be good to go. But now let's talk about these shoes in terms of comfort and the results might actually surprise you. So the Crocs Classic Clog is definitely a comfortable shoe. It's made up of cross light foam like I mentioned before and it's a one piece construction so it's simple and there's nothing that can really rub against your feet. Not only that but on the bottom of the footbed you've also got these massaging dimples which actually massage the bottom of your feet for like the first 10 to 15 minutes every time you put your foot into the shoe. After those 10 to 15 minutes you really stop noticing them and then they really just act as a way to keep your foot in the shoe and prevent it from sliding out. The foam itself is relatively soft it's not incredible it's definitely denser than I would like but because it is so dense it's probably more durable than other foams on the market. Comfort wise the Crocs Classic Clog is decent and it's definitely a shoe that you can wear all day. Next up, we've got the Adidas Pharrell Boost Slides. And when it comes to underfoot comfort, these definitely have the Crocs beat. The Boost cushion is much softer than the Croslite foam underfoot. However, it's not as soft as Boosts that you've experienced in other Adidas Boost sneakers. The Boost in these slides have a lot of give. They're very soft and plush underfoot. But again, they're just not as comfortable as something like an Ultra Boost underfoot. I have no idea why that is. I don't know why the slides are less soft than something like an NMD or an Ultra Boost. Maybe it's because of the rubber footbed on top of the boost. Maybe it's because the boost is slightly denser. I have no idea. Needless to say, the boost is definitely softer than the Croslite foam, but in my opinion, the strap actually chafes more than the Crocs do. So is the comfort that you get from the boost worth the $55 price hike over a pair of Crocs? I'm not really sure. And then finally, getting to the Yeezy Foam Runner. The foam combination of EVA and whatever algae-based foam that they're using in this shoe is incredible. I have been consistently blown away by how soft and yet how durable this foam actually is. Comfort-wise, the Yeezy Foam Runner wins hands down. It beats out both the Boost Slide and the Crocs, and it just feels incredible on foot. For whatever reason, the foam used on the Foam Runners is significantly softer than the Boost on the Boost Slides. I don't know why that is, but it's noticeably better underfoot. And when it comes to the Crocs, I mean, these are just leaps and bounds ahead of it. This is an incredibly comfortable shoe. The only thing I don't like about this shoe comfort-wise is that if you wear this shoe without socks, you're definitely going to get some chafing around the heel. Other than that, breathability is on point. Even though this is the most covered shoe out of the three shoes that we're looking at, because of all the ventilation holes, you never overheat. Like I said, durability on the foam runners is incredible. I've actually already done two videos on this shoe. The first was an initial review, and the second was after wearing this shoe for a week and a half, and after wearing this shoe now for 
what probably is about three weeks, it's still holding up incredibly well. Like barely any of the foam is wearing off the outsole, even though I've worn this shoe pretty much exclusively on concrete and asphalt. And it's just an incredibly comfortable shoe that just never seems to get beat up. For me personally, by far, this is the most comfortable shoe. And if you can grab this shoe for $75, it's a no brainer. For $300 though, is the comfort benefit worth it over the other shoes at retail? Probably not, but if you can grab this shoe for retail, just do it. It's dope. So to put these shoes in order based on comfort, the Crocs is comfortable, but definitely the least comfortable of the three. The Adidas Pharrell Boost Slides are more comfortable than the Crocs, but definitely less comfortable than the Foam Runners. And the Foam Runners are incredible. I love them. They're so soft underfoot and they just never wear down. But now let's get to the final category, aesthetics. And like I said at the beginning of the video, all of these shoes, except for maybe the slides, are polarizing. The only reason that these slides might turn people off is the crazy colors that they come in or just the thickness of the straps, but other than that, they're just a standard pair of slides, and because of that, they're not ugly, but they're also not that attractive. So to be fair, this guy isn't really winning any awards, so I'm going to put him off to the side. Visually, the Crocs are simple and clean, but they definitely carry a stigma. Let's be honest, if you wear a pair of Crocs, people are definitely going to sneer at you, they're definitely going to make fun of you, but at the end of the day, it's a comfortable shoe, it's cheap, and it's very easy to clean, which seems to be a really big deal for nursing professionals and also kids. Also, on a side note, these holes not only act as ventilation, but you can also put gibbets in them, which are like little charms that you can pop into each one of these holes. I actually have a chicken drumstick gibbet on this pair of KFC Crocs that came with it. Um, it's ridiculous, but if you're wearing a pair of Crocs, you're already going to look a little ridiculous, so it can't really get much worse. And then finally, once again, we've got the Yeezy Foam Runner, which, to be fair, might actually be the most polarizing shoe out of the three. There are some people who absolutely love the way this shoe looks, and I'm definitely one of those people. I love how crazy and out there it is, and how much time and effort definitely went into the sculpting of this shoe. Then on the other side of the coin, you've got the people who hate this shoe. They think it looks terrible, they think it looks like just a mess on your foot, and that it's ridiculous. And to be fair, I understand what they're saying. But what I've learned about the design of this shoe and what I've grown to love about this shoe is that it's designed to stand out. It's designed to be something that people stare at and make fun of, but you still look dope in it. This is genuinely how I imagine the shoes of the future looking. Like, yeah, they might look ridiculous, but this shoe looks like it came out of 2050, and that's one of the reasons I love it. There's not really any middle ground when it comes to the aesthetics of the Yeezy Foam Runners. You either love the way that they look, or you hate them. So when it comes to actually deciding which shoe you should grab, if you love the Foam Runners, I think they're worth it. Maybe not for $300, but if you can get a pair for retail, or if you can get a pair for cheaper than 300 bucks, I say pull the trigger. If you're looking for a stylish, eye-catching, out there sneaker, or you're just looking for the most comfortable foam sneaker you can buy, the Yeezy Foam Runner is absolutely the way to go. And if you don't like this colorway, there are more colorways coming out in the future, which will all retail for 75 bucks, so you'll have more chances to grab the shoe at retail. If you're looking for a more traditional shoe that feels good on foot, gives you some decent comfort, and is actually pretty stylish for what it is, the Adidas Pharrell Boost Slides are definitely the way to go. Again, the price is still a little steep at 100 bucks, but for 100 bucks, you're getting probably the most premium slide out there. And then finally, if budget is the most important thing to you, or you're just starting to get on that hype beast croc wave, which believe me is happening, the crocs are a solid option. At 45 bucks, you can't really go wrong, and there are some colorways of this shoe or collaborations of this shoe that resell for like $500. So you're getting a shoe that comes in both standard versions and then also ultra hyped up versions. So it's a pretty versatile shoe. And comfort wise, it's also pretty solid. It's a good feeling shoe underfoot. So now that you know my thoughts on these shoes, I would love to know your thoughts. So let me know in the comment section down below and let me know which shoe of these three that you like the best or which one that you would be willing to buy. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.